getting a drink. Thank God. <laughs> uh, with that amount of time killed, are you folks ready for your headliner tonight? Woo! One of my favorite here in town, he hosts a monthly show here at the Fallout Theater called Mixtape that you can next see on April 21st. But ladies and gentlemen, this guy coming back. I ask one more time, are you ready for your headliner? Woo! I am here and just high enough. Yes. Very good. Um, have y'all had a fun show? Have you had a good time? Perfect. I like how when Tim came up, he's like, I'm moving to Austin, and all y'all were like, fuck you. <laughs> Lonnie, of course, give it up for Lonnie. That was a really fun one. Taking out the rules to OnlyFans because being a comedian, I find a lot of people that I actually know are very naked online and um, <laughs> didn't really know how to treat that one, right? So I'm glad she got some rules on it laid out for us. Uh, give it up for Tito, of course. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Talking about his marital issues like we are, like red flags. <laughs> red flags. <laughs> I have two of the exact same thing. If I can't find my keys, I literally say, I hate living. So. <laughs> I once, uh, one time I said, uh, I saw some kids smiling and I said, I hate smiles. It's the actual true thing I've done. <laughs> so, I'm happy to be here. Uh, don't let my ethnic face dissuade you. I am happy to be outside. A lot, think, uh, a lot of people think for some reason I'm always angry, but it's just these big, thick ethnic eyebrows. They, can't, they just can't correlate anything else, right? I'm actually very excited to see you and uh, your pants. Very good. Uh, I am. I am a Mexican fella, though. Thank you very much. Yes, I am a Mexican for sure. Shut you don't. You don't mean it. Right? Uh, I am a Mexican fella. I like to get ahead of that because one time somebody was like, "Hey, are you an Islander?" And I was like, "Sir, I'm performing. Stop it." And now an Islander, like, what am I, Jason Momoa? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I took a break from Aquaman 2 to come do a great <laughs> set here at Fallout Theater. So thank you very much. My eyelid. Just because if I look like I was holding a ukulele, I could sing, uh, uh, oh, fuck. Some 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 thank you! I don't know. Uh, you only know one thing about Islanders, and it's that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I am a modern Mexican fella. I try every day, in every way, to break negative stereotypes. But I also mow my drug dealer's lawn for free weed, so who knows? <laughs> uh, I imagine when they legalize weed, I wonder how many drug dealer's lawns are going to go unmowed, right? <laughs> at, least, at least one. At least one. I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, by the way, uh, Austin is voting to legalize or decriminalize small amounts of weed in May. Yeah! So, right. Y'all get on that! Yes, sir. If we don't pass that, I'm going to just start punching random people in the face. <laughs> because based on voter turnout, I'm going to hit someone who didn't vote. <laughs> just start taking random slugs of people like, where's my doobie? Where's my fucking doobie, man? So I'm living my life these days. I, I, I uh, have a, a new job. I like my job. I had an old job where my old boss was a juggalo. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's what I get for working at GameStop, right? I'm 32, I shouldn't be here anymore, right? Uh, there was a 20-year-old dude at work who called me dad. I was furious. Right? I tell him to do stuff, and he's like, all right, dad. <laughs> yeah, okay, dad. And I was like, I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. I couldn't go to juggle the boss. He was good now. Right? Next time it happened, I got frustrated. I didn't know what to do, so I did the only thing I could think of, and I raised him. And he calls me sir, okay? He's, <laughs> he's my tall baby boy. <laughs> he got fired for stealing, I was like, my son! <laughs> uh, uh, I have a new job though, I work at Urban Axes. Has anybody heard of that place? Urban yeah. Axes? Yeah. Yeah. So I teach people how to throw axes, that's what I'm yeah. uh, It is uh, like a cool new sport, everybody loves it. It makes me wonder if other sports got that love when it first came out, like when people got off the bowling. You know? People are like, in the 1860s or when the fuck was born and invented, they're like, dude, you gotta come check this shit out, man. You got this marble, and it's like, it's a big marble, okay? And you like, 
<laughs> you're gonna like roll it down this hallway at some sticks. <laughs> sticks like on trees now, the sticks are on the ground, and you're trying to hit it in there, and it's just such a big ball. It's like a it's like a bowling ball sized marble. <laughs> There's never been anything this big to describe it. I guess maybe cannonballs, but those aren't fun. <laughs> a cannonball killed my brother. <laughs> Hold his legs right under from front of me. <laughs> That's a joke I wrote. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, jobs, covered that. I'm a, I'm a uh, we do live in divisive times, we live in divisive times, right? Or isn't that called a beaner? Yeah, but based on my poop, they should have called me a corner. <laughs> <laughs> or a mazer, depending on your <laughs> Do your due diligence, racist, don't be lazy. Dig through my feces. <laughs> Study my pottery, okay? Study me. Let me figure out that I like the taco. Uh, <laughs> thank you, I like that guy who's like, mmm, good. <laughs> that joke was a morsel. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, this might be hard for some of y'all because uh, you're not brown or, or color, but uh, when you get called in a racial slur, you, there's well meaning white friends we have, and they all try to make things a little bit better, but they can't, so they might be fine. And I had this, I told my friend, I was like, I, had, you know, I got called a beaner, and he's like, I forgot that also there's like a hierarchy of racial slurs, and white people know them all because they invented them. <laughs> so when I was like, yeah, I got called a beaner, and he was like, oh, dude, that sucks, but it's the worst one. And I was like, ah, shit! It's not! Okay, fuck you then. And he's like, don't give that racist the time of day. Just whatever he said, just let it roll off your back like water. And I was like, ah, that's a no one of the uh, we do live in divisive times. Y'all got that abortion ban here. Boo! 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 I agree. I am not surprised by the politics. I am surprised that companies aren't trying to make a buck off these bad politics. I thought that was the America I knew. Right? Right? I am surprised that places with abortion bans, companies aren't advertising their negative side effects to try and make a quick buck on these bad politics. And because they're not trying to do that, I've taken the liberty <laughs> of making up some rebranding for some things that had some negative side effects for folks in you know, these type of areas. The first thing, uh, I don't know if you know, is copper tone. Mm -hmm. Copper tone had chemicals that were bad for pregnancies. Okay, so copper tone could have stood in rebranding. It could have been like copper tone. There's no bun in your oven, but you can still get golden brown, right? They're not great. Oh. <laughs> They're not great. And there's three more. Two more, maybe. They're not great. Just to rebranding, I know there's no marketing people. They're not very clever. This is about as good as it gets, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Suche. Thank you. Are, are you? I'm brown, yes. Oh, yeah, but that I can. <laughs> <laughs> I written the check, got me on that one, yes, you're right. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to exchange information. <laughs> uh, sushi, raw fish, always been bad for pregnancy. Sushi could get a rebranding. Sushi, fuck it, keep going raw. Oh. <laughs> raw got you this far. Right, uh, they're not great. This is the last one. Uh, Marlboro cigarettes, of course. Mm. I gotta be like, Marlboro cigarettes. Texas is Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. That joke is a kick in the gut. Which is, of course, Texas is Plan C. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not good. All I can tell you is that that joke was funnier when I wrote it about Alabama. <laughs> it's a little too close to home. <laughs> we do live in divisive times, y'all. Ice! I'm not even gonna stop relenting on the horrible shit. Uh, ice, y'all know ice, uh, has ruined regular ice. <laughs> Every party I go to, they go on ice, I'm like, FUCK ICE! <laughs> Oh, my drinks are warm, honey. 
I think that's the worst thing they're doing. I haven't checked in since Biden was elected. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I, I, I never really actually worked. Um, I used to. That worked. Uh, makes, I don't even like saying the word ice anymore because of the new combination. It makes bit, buying a bag of it very difficult. <laughs> you, know, you go to the corner store, I'm like, hey, I need a bag from outside. And they're like, a bag of ice? And I'm like, well, a bag of water plus cold plus time. <laughs> 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 uh, ice cream? No. Cold, hard cream, all right? That's what I call it. Yo, we live in divisive time. We live in time so divisive, I can't even look at Neapolitan cold, hard cream. Uh, without thinking, why are all these colors so segregated? Who did this? Why is the vanilla so far away from the chocolate? And why are they in separate but equal portions? Why is this ice cream gerrymandered like Austin? What the fuck? Who made this? Of course, I'm sure you can clap. That was a good one, didn't it? They did both. Uh, no, no, they did. Uh, were we here for the other thing about the voting? I heard it. Perfect. That's exactly the right because it wasn't good. That's good. Uh, uh, of course, in Neapolitan ice cream, I don't eat the vanilla because it's boring and it has been forever, right? And that's why vanilla is so angry. And that's why vanilla votes the way it does. I don't trust vanilla because vanilla is always trying to go back to the good old days. Vanilla is always like, hey, why don't you come try my handmade home churn 1905 style vanilla? You know, before all, all those other flavors ruin everything. And like, come on, man. And then vanilla steps real hard on the internet. And it's like, you wouldn't even have ice cream if it weren't for vanilla. And you're like, motherfucker, shut up. <laughs> even vanilla extract still comes in this pre civil rights bottle. Let's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, yeah, I am talking about white people. They are seven out of ten people, so I notice y'all quite a bit. So I've noticed, though, a lot of white folks recently, they feel like they're losing their culture, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about? There's a Ross dress for less right here. <laughs> that is your culture, right? Mine too. Consumers honkies, all, okay? I grew up on Nickelodeon. I grew up on Mario Kart. I love buying shit. When I'm happy, when I'm sad, I don't care. I love buying shit. And if you don't think we're all a bunch of consumers honkies, I will bet you a fruit by the foot you're wrong. <laughs> right? We're the only country that calls it that. In Europe, they call it candy by the meter. They don't even pretend it's fruit. Right? We love a tasty lot, right? So, but, but, but let's give it to them. Let's say it, all right? White folks, you feel like you're losing your culture, you feel like you're losing your land, you're feeling like you're losing this country you work so hard to build. Well, congratulations, white folks, you're finally Native Americans. <laughs> you're no longer 116th Cherokee, you're 100% Jeep Grand Cherokee, okay? <laughs> uh, fuck, I got the next line. That makes y'all the new Native Americans? But that does make us the new white people. <laughs> I gotta say, as the new white people, I don't care what you're going through, get off my land. <laughs> you know, you ask me, where are we gonna go? Don't worry, reservations have been made for you. <laughs> By you. Right? You may be asking, well, Fuck! That's a brand new joke and I forgot all the timing line. I'm just going to skip that shit. <laughs> new white people, where will we go? Don't shed any tears along the trail when we kick you off your land. That's copywritten. <laughs> I am married. <laughs> Hard transition. <laughs> I don't believe in transitions. I look at notes and facts. <laughs> uh, I am married. My wife's white. <laughs> you know, I remember wondering how long it takes to change a white person's mind with on race stuff. It's six years of constantly talking about it. <laughs> now she's as brown as well. She's not brown. You know what I'm saying? She's, 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 some shit. she's like, that's fucked up. I'm like, yes. It took a while. Yes. <laughs> um. Yes, we're married, I'm white, or I'm white, fucking, I'm deep inside, yes. 
<laughs> you heard me talk about Mario Kart. That's my. So this is true. This is entirely true. My dad was a micro worker. My mom, when she was five years old, grew up picking cotton, and I grew up with Nickelodeon. Okay, so it's very difficult to relate. Right? Got that. That was going to be funnier, but I realized who I was talking to in this crap. Uh, I am married. My wife's white. I'm brown. Together, we're brave. Okay. <laughs> Next life event is kids. We don't want them because it looks like they suck. I'm not 100 percent sure. We have friends. We have friends that have kids. They look beat up. They look exhausted. They're like, it's worth it. I'm like, well, that's how I feel after day drinking and night pizza. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, know. I, don't know. I have uh, uh, friends that are, you know, the, there's some folks that I know out there. Not really friends, in, but the, there's some folks that I've seen that have a really hard time with, right? They're having problems having kids. They have medical stuff. Very sad if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> if you're not into having kids, what they're afflicted with doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> you mean you get to fuck raw all the time and no babies for free? <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, this happened to me. I, I have a Facebook friend. Uh, they did uh, everything under the sun. They tried to have a baby. Did everything under the sun. They did in vitro. They had their own hashtag. Nothing seemed to work. <laughs> <laughs> that guy gave money to a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, though, they had made a post that they're successful. The doctors were successful, and they were going to be having a baby. And I was very annoyed. Because uh, they announced it like this, it's a miracle! With a lot of thoughts and prayers and a little science, we're going to have a baby! And I'm like, bullshit a little science! The way the ocean has a little salt, the way the desert has a little sand, the way I'm carrying a little extra weight, the way this joke's going on a little too long. That's a science baby, right? The only miracle here is that Science was able to give you a child, whereas God was like, mm. <laughs> God looked at the task of giving them a baby the same way I look at a bowl of fruit. So, if anything, that isn't a holy baby because the winning gets his wishes, right? Uh, <laughs> Y'all, as I've been living and breathing, I have grown older. That joke is actually very old, and my wife and I feel very differently. And we've been trying to have a kid for two years. For two years. And never in my life have my own words come back to bite me in the ass so hard. Okay? They say that karma's a bitch. But karma is really just the retributive uh, energy of the actions we put into the universe. So if karma's a bitch, it's because I was one first. <laughs> there, one, one time I did that joke, and this lady came up onto the stage, she grabbed the mic from me, and she was like, infertility isn't anything anyone would be ashamed about. And I was like, 30, and I was like, yeah, okay, all right, lady, all right, all right. And now I am that lady, right? <laughs> I completely feel like it was, I was, I was just a boy playing with fun. Right? <laughs> Uh, and uh, so yeah, we're actually we're trying to have a kid. We're doing a lot of seeing this uh, fertility specialist coming a lot. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> fertility specialist. I have gotten very acquainted with my wife's cycle. I had no idea that shit was so precise. It's so precise that it makes me understand why so many women are into astrology. <laughs> right. As soon as you see the cycle. Do you realize there's cycles fucking everywhere? <laughs> the universe is out there, man. It all starts right here, you know? <laughs> I told my wife, and I was, like, I was like, you know the moon is in the same phase every time when it starts? She's like, yeah, that's how it works. Like, ah, cool, man. <laughs> cool, man. I'm learning. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, um, it's, um, We've been trying at about the six month stage. My wife was like, remember that joke you used to tell? And I'm like, I can't forget that joke! I was like, oh, yes. 
you're like, you're jinxing it. You jinxed us. And I was like, yeah, of course I did. Oh, well, well, shit, I sure did. And every time I felt like that, you know, screwed up Royal, I start talking like I'm from Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just like, well, screwed the pooch. <laughs> screwed the pooch and you couldn't get that pregnant neither, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along, tracking the astrology. Oh yeah. Um. So I was worried. I am coming a lot. Thank you. That was a rad response to that. Uh, yeah. uh, but I was worried because we had to do a sperm test, and I was thinking like, oh, I hope that I don't have a low sperm count. So I was surprised when like actually your sperm is very high, and I was like, oh, I have a high sperm count. They're like, no, your sperm is very high. <laughs> has bloodshot eyes somehow. <laughs> it all listens to that last podcast on the left. It's disappointing. Yeah. Right. It's disappointing. Uh, I have an 11% morphology. 11% morphology, and that means that one out of 10 of my sperm is perfect. And the other nine are me. Okay, they are me. Um, that was the punchline. All right, I'll work <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna... Uh, uh, so, uh, I'm just gonna skip that part too, fuck it. Uh, uh, spinning nowhere. Oh, that would've been a good tie-in. Y'all, is there... Is it... Is there something... Is it not quite... Y'all are doing good, right? I'll have a good time, right? Yeah, yeah! Uh, I just wanna make sure... Uh, 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 Y'all need to get a drink or something? Or... Uh, the next thing about this whole fertility thing is we actually got some DNA results. We got to see like where my wife was from. She's Polish and German, so we're sure she's she fucking thought, right? But her DNA test came back and there's a map with all these dots, all these places I'm from, and it's for white folks, very precise. So it was like, it was like you're from this block in Luxembourg. <laughs> Me, a brown fella, they're like you're from the entire Western Hemisphere. My entire, she had dots on the map, and I had the entire left half of the world. <laughs> I get it, it's hard to track DNA when you killed everybody. Right? I get it. I'm surprised they didn't respond to my DNA test with like, oh, you survived? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, all that is fast. Uh, there is one thing out there that really makes me want to have a kid real bad. It's that uh, uh, her parents voted for Donald Trump. Yeah, so I want to give them a brown grandbaby so fucking bad. <laughs> I want to end their whiteness with my brownness. That means, and I'm not sure that's a good reason to have kids. Revenge. Uh, but, that's right. Right? but I know how phenotypic traits are diffused, right? I'm Mexican, which is Spanish and native. My wife is Polish and German, or so she thought, right? That's three whites and a brown, okay? There's a whole Punnett Square's worth of disappointing outcomes that could happen. <laughs> I could have a short white baby. That would be awful. <laughs> because they're the angriest. <laughs> the entire alt-right is this tall. <laughs> And that's why their hair is all slicked over, because everybody's just like, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> you little scamp. Ah, shut your goddamn trap. <laughs> I could have a perfectly blended baby, to where everybody its whole life is like, no oh, man, where are you really from? <laughs> I'm cool. I could have a tall blonde lady. That'd be an interesting birth. Teach her everything I know by the intersectionality of race, class, and gender. Have her be insufferably woke, like a daddy. <laughs> like, Mija, you gotta finish your chicken and rice. And she's like, Dad, it's pronounced a rose con pollo. <laughs> <laughs> Our people have suffered enough. <laughs> and I'm like, I overdid it. <laughs> and she's like, there's no such thing when it comes to the patriarchy. And I'm like, that's my girl. Y'all, I'm Mila Garcia. <laughs> 